Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining me. Sorry it's taken so long to get this video created. I know people have been waiting for it, but uh, my full-time accounting job has been extremely busy running an embroidery business and raising a four-year-old. Uh, the time it took me to create this video took a lot longer than I anticipated, so I apologize for that, uh, but without that, uh, here we go. These are the directions on how to connect your embroidery machines uh, to be able to send files to them wirelessly. Um, even though the Brother PR1055X has native wireless capabilities, um, they require you to use their PDS, um, their design software to send the files to the machine. You can't just do it directly through your computer. So here's my workaround um, to, uh, to allow you to do that. Um, Brother is my brand of choice that I use. I have a Brother PR1055X a PR650 and uh, a sewing embroidery combo machine, a Quattro 3. So I have all three brother machines. Baby Lock is literally identical. They're both made in the same factory. So one really is the same as the other. Uh, but I'm assuming um, any any of these, any embroidery machines will have the same functionality. Um, so I'm sure this would work with anyone. I'm just not familiar with any other brand other than Brother. So, with that, um, um, what you need uh, are, let's see, here's your requirements. So you need a computer uh, with Windows 10 installed. Um, I've opted to use a mini PC, which is right there. That little tiny little black box is just my mini PC. Doesn't have a monitor, keyboard, or mouse connected to it, a remote into it. Um, so it takes up uh, hardly any space whatsoever, and I have all three of my machines connected to it. Um, so you also need um, all the computers connected on the same network, whether via Wi-Fi or wirelessly or Ethernet cable, as long as they're on the same network connected with the same router. Um, that's all you need. And then your, your embroidery machine with the USB to USB-A cable that came with your machine. Uh, connect to connect the machine to the computer. So that's all that you need. Uh, go to the next screen here. So the USB cable that came with your machine has two ends, a USB end and a USB A end. The USB end is the one that goes to your embroidery machine. Um, it's also used for printers, scanners, whatnot. It's the computer accessory um, that gets plugged into this kind of square looking end. Um, the USB-A um, is the longer, more rectangular looking end, and that goes to your computer. Um, so here, here's my PR1055X, the USB side, that gets plugged in. Um, as you can see, there's a little computer icon for the port. Um, this is my PR650 over here. Again, has a little computer symbol, a little different, but same concept that the USB-B cable gets connected into that. And then on the computer itself, um, the regular USB 2.0, ports, so these are USB-A ports. The 2.0 are the ones that have the black, which is a little older um, technology, so the speed's a little slower. For us, it's not going to matter. Um, more sending or such small file speed isn't going to be an issue. Uh, but the blue ports down here, uh, these are USB 3.0, which is faster, but it doesn't make any difference. All of these would work just fine. So you could technically have one, two, three, four machines hooked up to this mini PC uh, just fine and have no trouble. So the, the blue inside is the USB 3.0. Uh, so then on Amazon, there are a couple mini PCs that are actually on sale right now. There's this B-Link for $118 um, with a $10 coupon, it looks like. Um, which has 4 gigabyte of RAM, 64 gig of a hard drive, um, and Windows pre-installed. So 
I mean, the fact that Windows costs about 100 bucks itself, um, the computer is only $118, so that really pays for itself. If you were to go look for a mini PC without Windows installed, you'd have to buy it yourself and get installed, and that would just double the price of the computer. So this 118 bucks is a great deal. Uh, this other one is Tanix, a brand I've not heard of before, but again, you don't need much. You just need 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gig hard drive, and with Windows installed, and that that's about it. I mean, it just sits there silently. There's no fan, doesn't make any noise, and it just quietly does its job, and it does it well. So... So with that, um, I'm, I'm going to remote into my mini PC. So this is my embroidery mini, as I call it. Uh, when you set up Windows, um, uh, there's a computer name that you can assign to your computer. A lot of times it just defaults to a name. Um, I like to name my computers something that's meaningful to me. So this is called embroidery mini. So if you want to do the same, um, it does come in handy when we start mapping the drive to know what it's called. And to do that, if you just right-click on the Windows icon here and go to System. The device name here is what your computer name is, this embroidery mini. So if you want to change it to something meaningful to you, you can, all you have to do is click this Rename this PC, type in what you want, follow the prompts, and you'll be good to go. Um, I do think... Um, it requires a reboot if you rename the computer, though. So just know that if you do rename it, um, rebooting it is required for it to take effect. Um, so to connect um, the embroidery machine, um, you just open up File Explorer. And at this point, my embroidery machine is turned off. So I'll turn it on quickly. And once it turns on, you'll see the USB drive. Yep, there it goes. Um, show up. So this is my PR1055X embroidery machine drive connected to the computer right now. So to share it, just right click, go down to properties, go to sharing. And you can see right now it's not shared. Click this advanced sharing button and then click this share this folder. Um, again, I like things to be meaningful to me, so and you can call us whatever you want. So I just name it my uh, model of my machine. So this is my PR1055X. Then you just click on permissions. Um, and if you don't see everyone already listed in here, you can click add. In this box, type everyone. And then just click this check names. And once it's underlined, you know it's valid. And you can just say okay. I already have it, so I'm just going to hit cancel here. But then just click on everyone to highlight it. And you want to click this allow full control. Because uh, we want to be able to read, write, and delete files to that drive, which is our embroidery machine. So then you can just say apply. Okay. And then say okay. Um, so at this point, the... the um, Embroider machine is now mapped with this path here. So it's just a backslash backslash um, your computer name, which I mine's named Embroidery Mini, and then the share name, which you just called it, which is my uh, embroidery model number. So computer name, share name, and that's all you need to get it mapped. Um, the, uh, a couple, we do need to make a couple of other settings to enable file sharing. So you can click on this Network and Sharing Center link next. And in here, um, you'll see three categories, a private, a guest, and an all networks. So first, we need to go to the private, um, expand that, and make sure that turn, file, turn on file and picture sharing is selected. Go to the guest network, do the same thing, make sure file and printer sharing is turned on and then for this all networks you, all these other settings you can leave as are 
the important one is down at the bottom here to turn off password protected share. If you don't turn that off, it'll require you to have a username and password and map with that username and password and it makes things a lot more difficult. So you can just click save settings or save changes and close. And that's all you need um, to do on your mini PC. And you're, you're good to go. So I'll minimize that. Now this is back to my regular computer. Um, and so I go here, if you open up File Explorer, and we can just go to this PC. We want to map a drive on our main computer that has all of our embroidery files on it. Uh, or you can do it to any, any computer. I mean, it doesn't matter which one. You can have multiple computers connected to the embroidery machine. So, But this is just my main desktop that I use that has all my embroidery and digitizing software on. So then you can just click on my this PC computer map network drive and then map network drive again. And you can choose whatever drive letter is, in, is meaningful to you. I'll just leave it at Z. And then that path that we created um, for that share is just backslash backslash embroidery mini slash PR 1055 X. And then make sure this reconnect at sign on is checked. So every time you reboot your computer, it'll um, remap this drive for you automatically. Then just click finish. And then if you don't get an error message, it's connected. Then I just hit F5 to refresh. And there it is. So this is now my 1055X embroidery machine. I can copy files directly here if I want. So if I can just double click, this is my machine. I can take a PDS file, oops, copy it, paste it in there. And then I'll turn my machine on so you can see it here. There you go. As you can see, there it is. That's the file. I've selected it. I'll go ahead and delete it now and it'll disappear. As you can see, it now disappeared from down there. Put it back. There it is, back in there again. So you can see that me putting it there, it shows up just fine. I also use Hatch software. So I do my all my digitizing and uh, modifying in Hatch. So within Hatch, I can set uh, the machine location. So if I go to machine, transfer settings, uh, for my brother, PR1055X, you can just browse, go to this PC, scroll down to the drive that you mapped, which is my PR1055X, just say OK, and say OK again. And now when I want to send a design directly from Hatch, I can just say transfer. It lets me know the file has now been sent. Zoom in here. Oops. And there you can see the file is now there. If I go to this, you can see that it's share up share my desktop. You can see that the file has also been added here. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully that's helped. Um, any questions? I'll be uh, leave comments or you can feel the email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, but yeah, this is I've been using it now ever since I got my 1055x, and it works great. My PR10 or my PR650, which has no internet connected to it at all, works just as well. So your your inverter machine doesn't need to have wireless connectivity. Um, that's what the computer. The mini PC is used for. That's where the wireless comes in. Uh, so yeah. So uh, one thing I should mention too is that your your mini PC 
Um, when you do set it up, make sure that you do have internet and it's connected, whether it's wireless or ethernet cable, just make sure that is working. Um, because if you can't talk to the computer, it's not going to do any good. So, all right, that's about it. Um, any questions, let me know, like the video, click the like button. Um, hopefully uh, I'll be, have time to do some more videos in the future to help everybody out. Take care. Bye.